Hey guys, uh, this is my second video blog and this time I'm going to be talking about You should see the the URL, the website address. If you visit my blog and have a look at what I've written there over the years, you can see that of what is possible. And it's it begins with repentance, which you can only repent for a sin if you admit that you're a sinner. If you don't think you're a sinner, then there's nothing to repent of. And so, what I want to show you is from Scripture why repentance is necessary. And if we go all the way back to Genesis 4:7. This is what God says. Now they've, they've, they've had to leave the, um, the garden, which is in Eden, and um, the two brothers have had their conflict. And God says to the one, He says, "If you do well, will you not be accepted?" This is Genesis four seven. And if you do not do well, sin is crouching at the door. And its desire is for you but you must rule over it and I want to emphasize that God's first bit of advice after we've left the garden which is in Eden God's first bit of advice is if you do well in other words if you have no sin you'll be acceptable everything will go well but if you do not do well if you sin this thing called sin is crouching at your door it's a thing which metaphorically can crouch and it's its desire is for you its desire is for me it's for your marriage it's for your city it's its desire is for you but you must rule over it and so that's the first thing I'd like to say in this uh, video blog is God's command his first command after we are out of the garden which is in Eden his first command is you must rule over sin and if you've read Romans 5 Paul is talking about sin and the consequences of sin which is death and if you read Romans um, I think it's verse uh, chapter 5 and so on uh, he goes into a lot of detail about sin and all of these things because he's trying to do what God said here in Genesis 4 7 if you do not do well, sin is crouching at your door, its desire is for you, but you must rule over it. So we've got this, this problem with this thing called sin. And if we look in, uh, here are 12 verses, all of which I'm going to put the quotes at the bottom of this page. Um, there are 12 verses that I extracted from Isaiah and from Jeremiah, and I'm going to read them off to you. This is what happens to our world if we don't master sin. Okay, Isaiah 24, 3 to 13. The land is defiled by sin and life becomes very hard for people. Just think about your world. Think about your city. Think about unemployment. Think about poverty. Think about addiction. Think about sickness. Isaiah 24, 13 to 3 to 13. The land is defiled by sin and life becomes very hard for people. Isaiah 30 verse 13. Iniquity and guilt breaks the protection that God has for us and it's like a broken section of a high wall. Isaiah 50 verse 1. Because of iniquities, God, which is sin, God divorced his people. Isaiah 59 verse 1 to 3. Iniquities have made a separation between us and God. Our sins... Because of our sins, he has hidden his face and he will not hear us. Think about all of the people who are at church, who are calling out, crying out. Think about your own times when you may have prayed and not heard anything. Isaiah 64, 5. Anger. God's anger occurs because of sin. Isaiah 64, verse 6. Iniquities separate us from God's favor and our iniquities, which is sin. They hurry us to destruction. Just think about what's going on all over the world and the destruction which is occurring. That is occurring because of sin. Isaiah 
Isaiah 64 verse 7 he has hidden his face of, from us and our iniquities consume us just think about how pornography is consuming marriages consuming eating away the people eating away the men and the women and the children eating them Isaiah 66 verse 3 to 4 our sins bring delusions mockings calamities and afflictions if you're wondering why people are deluded it's because of our sin Jeremiah 2 verse 3 to 4 sins keep the rain away here in South Africa we know that the rain was kept away in Australia we know that the rain was kept away all over the world the rain was kept away it's our sins that keeps the rain away sin builds up it physically builds up Jeremiah 64 verse 5 God's anger comes upon us because of sin Jeremiah 64 verse 6 it, our sin removes God from us Jeremiah 64 verse 7 our sin results in God hiding his face from us these are the consequences of sin and that's why it says in Genesis 4 7 if you do well you will be accepted if you do not do well sin is crouching at your door and you its desire is for you its desire is for you for your sexuality for your identity for your body for your mind for your spirit and your soul for your household for your marriage for your future for your suburb for your city for your country and for this world but God says its desire is for you God says you must rule over it now the question is and this is the question this is the key thing how do we rule over it repenting from sin is step one that is for sure step one to acknowledge that we are sinners in a fallen world to come to grips with that to deal with that and then to go beyond that and repent for the sin which is turning God's face away from us just imagine if we actually did do that just imagine if his face was turned towards us just imagine if he wasn't separated from us imagine if he was present with us and not yes I believe he's present I mean really present with us I mean present in our homes present in our church present in our work present with us and the key is for us to rule over sin which we can never do by ourselves we are weak we are fallen we're addicted there's nothing in us that's good enough for us to be acceptable for us to rule over sin it's not going to happen You've probably lived long enough to know you can't do it. So how do you rule over sin? Through Jesus Christ. Through what he did on the cross. We drink his blood. We eat his flesh. He washes us. He cleanses us. We wear his robes. His spirit within us. Renewing us. So I'm going to talk a lot more about this. But this post was really about repentance and to say focus on Genesis 4 7 you must rule over it God bless you guys and Merry Christmas for two days time and I hope none of you are getting all religious about this this thing I know it was Jesus' birthday and I'm very grateful for his birthday God bless you